Right then, uh, here we are with uh, the tricycle again. Uh, this is uh, tricycle. This is tricycle project part eight, isn't it, Matt? Yeah, part eight. Yeah. Nine months since we did the last one, so time flies. And uh, we've got major updates to discuss on this, haven't we? Yes, we have. We've got yeah. Quite, quite a bit to discuss. We'll go through some of the smaller bits and pieces first. So I don't go a bundle on stickers on cars, especially bumper stickers that say things like honky for your horny and all that kind of rubbish. Yeah. Right? But I actually like this. I stuck this on half a daily. This is the sort of thing he's selling it, man. Yeah, it is, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dodgy motors, like. <laughs> but um, I were a massive fan of Minder in the 80s, and when I saw that, I mean, I, I like original dealer stickers as well. I think they're cool if you, if you can keep them or get copies of them. But uh, I just like that. There's also a little tax disc holder to go with it. But um, the half a daily three month guarantee must have been will be well over now, won't it? <laughs> yeah, I think I, so. I, uh, but there's no evidence of any um, grass growing or any horticultural phenomenon going on. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I thought that I thought that'd be a nice touch. And let's go inside, car now. Right. A few minor updates here. I've added these two gauges: a little rev counter and a vacuum gauge. I'm going to put them in a different housing because I don't like how that is. Um, I might not even keep that because it's not really in keeping with care. Uh, vacuum gauge is really useful. Uh, helps when you're, you're cruising along. I've got my, I moved my cigarette lighter. That's always been in there, but it was facing down before. And the schoolboy error, when you're facing down, you're driving along, it wobbles loose. So I've just, I've just put it there like as it should. I didn't want to cut any of this dashboard up to fit these. All these can be removed go back to original if I want to or if anybody else wanted to in future the other little thing I've done modern upgrades math yep turn the ignition on see the little plunger button for wash up wipers yep. that smells better isn't it yeah right but I have to sort the wipers out there's, there's some dodgy hot loom there's a connection loose we're not getting any wiper action Hubnut will not be impressed <laughs> I've also bought a new choke cable um, that's a lot better now and it's even a locking one that'll lock I bought that from Moss um, from their shop in Shipley um, it was 28 quid it was quite expensive actually I will get into the reason why I needed this new choke cable because the original choke cable is a solid cable it's quite stiff this has got like more like the bicycle type cable it's a lot more it's a lot more bendy a lot more pliable but look at that under there look how all that's cracked and come off yeah. a brand new item all I did was pull that it were a little bit I just pulled it and it just all collapsed off at end of stick off the end of thing I've glued it all back on like as much as I can but that's crap quality isn't it you know 28 pound for that part but I wanted to keep the original knob that's the original Reliant knob which right. we used on other cars with a single C in the middle I just want it to look as it should but like I say, these can be removed and go back to normal. So that's what we've got up to so far. I'll show you, I'll show you what I did with this washer. Because I, again, although it's electric, I wanted to keep the original fit on, fitment on here and convert this. I'll just show you how I did that. Right. So there's various ways. It's, it's not difficult. All you're doing is putting a switch on the back of that button. But this is how I did it. This will prise out of the back. If, all you have to do is undo that little screw thing, take your pipes off the back, and the whole unit will come out. And these little these little clips here clip into holes on the on the cylinder case and you just prise them out with a screwdriver and then this comes out. And that is remnants, I think that is remnants of old dried up grease. So so when you press the button you get this action going on. Right? But what I did was um, another one of our hobbies math is uh, arcade machines and yes, arcade it is, games yeah. in it yeah. and so this is just a button push to make button that you would see on arcade machines and all I did was it just comes apart like this you take this micro switch off end of here and then that clips out of there with the spring so this is the casing all you do is or all I did was I took about 10 mil off there cut that off 10 mil down to get rid of this shroud and then this comes back together pops in there like that and then with with that shroud cut off and 
10, about 10 mil down there. The, the length doesn't change because this button stays like that. And then I found that that were a perfect fit inside the casing to replace this. So when you put this switch on here, like this, that slides in to the empty cylinder and this terminal butts up to the end and it's the perfect length it's the perfect length as you saw in there just to click that yeah and then all you do is you drill a hole through there just there where my fingernail is on that just drill a hole through there and through there and there that, that hole then lines up perfectly with the holes that that went in there these tabs oh yeah and you just wrap a tie wrap just wrap a tie wrap around it and then this is what it looks like and so this is what it looks like if you can get in there Mav can you see that is it coming yeah, you down can clearly see it. Yeah, you can so see you can it. see the switch tie wrapped in the original housing and then I just mounted I just mounted oh. an electric pump here alongside the coil again just mounted it with tie wraps it's not going anywhere and so a little bit more modern um, washer wipers I've got to fix that wiper switch I don't think it's a switch I think it's a connection with the loom somewhere but that definitely needs sorting and this is the new choke cable which you could really do with I could have cut that should, should really have cut that down but I've left it as it is um, it's okay is that and it's operating fine now right so the major upgrades then the 850 engine and gearbox is in um, I didn't intend to do it when I did but there were a reason and what was happening was when I pulled the car when I pulled the tricycle out of the garage in March I was getting this grinding noise when I was changing gear um, it was happening in reverse and first that's when I could hear it it did to be honest it did do it before but it'd do it and then it'd go away and I never mentioned it because I, I didn't really think it were a problem but then from March this year started to do it all the time so I thought right get the gearbox out get the engine out this is an excuse to, to do go the 850 upgrade and when I got it out I pulled the gearbox off and this is what I discovered look at that look how that is all po polished and being rubbed down and what had happened is um, I'm not even sure if this is a Reliant clutch somebody has looked at this and has told me that that looks really old they've not seen one like that for a long long time and this is a clutch from an LUK kit because it's got the LUK stamp on this is a much later this came out of one of them engines that I were given it's used but it's in pretty good nick and if you look if you look at the face there edge on apart from that bit in the middle where your first motion shaft goes this friction line and sits proud of everything that's in the middle not the case here look how that look how that sticks proud of this and to add insult to injury right I mean it is the right diameter but I'm not sure that's a reliant clutch to add insult to injury this is the 700 flywheel that was in the car and this is the locking tab that you use when you attach it to the car and look what somebody's done the locking tab is all you use somebody had even put these thick washers that one's still stuck on there look these thick washers were on here so not only were the heads of the bolts sticking proud more proud than what they should be that's sticking proud and so they were grinding and the heads of the bolts had been ground off by about a mil or so so that wasn't right so that had to be sorted out and I have to say putting that engine and gearbox into this car I did it on my own with a single trolley jack and two of them blocks of wood there and it was a nightmare I don't ever want to go through that again <laughs> I'm telling you now right not with those tools and not on my own um, and not on this sloping drive if that ever happens has to be done again it's not getting done like that and there were a few things that I learned while I was doing it that I didn't know before so look at these gearboxes when I was putting it in I got the engine and gearbox in no problem and I found that the engine mounts at the front were pushed as far forward as they could go and the engine mounts at the back 
or should I say the gearbox mounts at the back that go um, that, that screw in here they were as far back as they can go but it were okay it wasn't a problem it just meant that you couldn't move the engine and engine and gearbox assembly anywhere it was stuck where it was stuck which you were fine but then I couldn't get the prop shaft on I just couldn't get it on at all there wasn't enough room um, you're supposed to bolt the prop shaft at the axle end first because can you see how this nut sticks out here this is on the 850 box it's not properly screwed in on this but you see how it sits proud yeah it sits proud there and it doesn't on this one and I couldn't get it in and look at the there's a different these look identical this is your 850 box this is the 700 box that were in it I mean this is not how you would measure it but look at this difference in length can you see how that's just over 15 15 inches 15 and a touch to get to the middle of that flange and on this one it's 16 it's over 16 it's over it's about 16 and now there's a little gap here where I tried to take that cover off but there's a bit of a difference there yeah so obviously this is longer and then I found out that do you remember that um, Reliant kit and anti-roll bar that I did oh yeah with all that Meccano gubbins under there yeah what had happened is my rear axle had moved forward by about 10 mil so this difference here plus that difference on the axle meant that I couldn't get the prop shaft in so what that meant was all that had to come out so under here now we're all back to standard the the um, lowering blocks had to come out and the uh, all that gubbins that I'd done with the anti-roll bar all that's gone and as I said before it were all removable there were nothing drilled anywhere so any any modifications that I make I always try to make sure that you can go back to standard and so all that came out no problem and then the uh, the studs located exactly where they should do on here and I heard the prop shaft drop in because the prop shaft was bolted to the rear axle and I heard it drop I heard it drop at the gearbox end in, right. into place so that sorted that out so that's something that I learned another thing as well is if anybody ever if, there's look, quite a few people have done this 850 upgrade on, from a 700 or Regal if anybody else is thinking of doing it one other thing you've got to bear in mind is this is the flywheel that came off the 700 engine if you fit an 850 gearbox on your 850 engine which nine times out of ten people are going to do because you get synchro on first and you get slightly taller gears in, in first three gears as well um, if you use an 850 gearbox you must use an 850 flywheel if you use your 700 gearbox you must use the 700 flywheel and the only difference really is this spigot bearing in the middle the different sizes because on the gearboxes that 850 that 850 diameter there is larger than that 700 so you've got to use the right flywheel there is a there is a later flywheel or should I say a later ring gear that goes on here that's a, that's a different angle of the teeth for pre-engaged pre-engaged starter but I'm, I'm not bothering with that I'm still using the inertia starter so I'm not going that modern math <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean so um, if you remember it last video when we had, when we got the engine running down here um, we couldn't get the engine running with the SU carb um, we could only get it running with this this is that this is the it's like a new Weber carb um, and it ran beautifully with this didn't it oh it ticked over yeah. that's as far as we got we couldn't get this going at all well this isn't the this isn't the exact carb the exact carb is on the car now and I found out what the problem was when I uh, there should be a float ball fuel ball bolted to this and then this jet links up there that's how it goes and then this is attached to the float ball and what happened was when I took the carb off and I dismantled this this just collapsed in my hand right. everything just broke apart in my hand uh, and I thought well it's not supposed to be like that so I bought a brand new one of these which comes in a sealed packet uh, it's even got a nice little new modern uh, little grommet on the end that'll it's ethanol resistant um, for modern fuel so I bought a brand new one of them I also got a brand new needle 
not that I don't think that, that will cause any problems. And um, this is how they're supposed to operate, should be nice. That could be a bit more fluid, but that's how it works. Put oil in this dash top. I use three in one oil. Some people use different stuff. Some people use 20, 20 50 motor oil, or you can get straight, you can buy a special oil from um, Bell and Fuel Systems for this. I think it's just straight 20 weight oil. But anyway, once I'd done that and I fired the engine up, it started, it started great. So this were either clogged on or whatever. I don't know, but obviously it's seen better days. Yeah, <laughs> as yeah. that, hasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> right. So we got the I got the SU cab going. Not not a problem. Right. So here's the engine in here. Um, 850 cc's of raw power, Matt. <laughs> and um, and it's really nice there. I've got the kit and air filter on here. Um, originally, I had a spacer on here, and this kit and air filter were catching the wiper switch and it damaged it and I ended up having to buy a new wiper switch I don't know if that's contributed to this this dodgy connection on here but I'm gonna have to sort that out another thing that yeah. broke right yeah when I was getting the engine out before you have to tilt it down while well, trying to get the gearbox out on its own originally and I left the pipe attached at the bottom it had loosened the clamp off but it pulled that straight out radiator so that radiator was knackered um, this is a proper Reliant Regal 330 radiator and the radiator cap is at this end now whereas before it were over here so this radiator that I had before can't have been a proper Reliant radiator must have been out of a mini or something um, it worked okay but this 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 is this has been great and um, to be honest the car is running the car is running the best that it, that it has done in my ownership now I am gonna try that Weber carburetor at some point because I can't resist tinkering. <laughs> <laughs> I have to give it a go. I'm not going to do it just yet because it is really nice. But the tick over isn't quite as spot on as what it was in that video with that Weber. But the only other thing to consider with a Weber is some reliant owners complain that it, it suffers from hot starting and vaporization when it gets hot under here. Right. Trike owners love the Weber when they've done when they've done these conversions, but they don't have that problem because the the whole engine's open, isn't it? Yeah. It's atmosphere. Yeah. I will give it a try at some point, but for now I'm happy as it is, and we'll um, we'll leave it running. The one issue I did have was the speedo were running far too fast. Let's wait for this to go off. Yeah. Um, yeah. The car were driving lovely, but the speedo were way out and when i were doing 60 mile an hour i had my little phone i had my phone in here with gps and when it were reading 60 mile an hour which is about fastest i'd go in this this were past 80 it were right down here when i were doing 50 55 it were bobbing around 70 to 80. it was just way out and um and i thought i can't live with that because not only is a speedo out this is turning over a lot more miles than it should be you know what i mean misreading yeah. that i thought I contacted um, a company about getting this recalibrated and when they found out that this was an AC speedo and not a Smiths they said they couldn't do it they said but they could make me a speed reduction box yeah um, and I said to them can you send me a photograph of this speed reduction box so I know where, where to mount it how to mount it and then I can tell you where to splice the speedo cable because they wanted to know that information. Yeah. And I couldn't really give them that info unless they sent me a picture of the box. Yeah. I asked them twice, I got nothing from them, right? So I came up with my, my own idea. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you're, like, you're laughing at you, yeah, you know what's I know coming, where right? Coming, yeah. right? So I decided to build my own speed reduction box. And here it is, my own homemade speed reduction. And can you see what it's made out of? It's made from Lego. <laughs> it's tie wrapped to the floor of the car. It's quite firm in there. There's a little bit of giving it, but not much. And I, I worked out what gearing I needed from Lego Technics gears. And I built this little box around the gears, packed it full of grease, tied it up there. And where the cable goes in, on this input side here, I've used JB Weld to stick the cable inside that little axle and same on the other side and believe it or not this is still working 
I expected this to disintegrate, didn't I? Yeah, you did. I yeah. expected this at 40 mile an hour or faster to just break apart and stop working, and it hasn't. I've had it up to 60 mile an hour on motorway to Halifax last Saturday. It hadn't done a lot of miles since since I've fitted it, but it's working. I just used a little. Um, I used two 20. 20 tooth gears and then the next one's a 28 tooth and that gets my speedo pretty much bob on <laughs> it's not perfect but with the with the gears that are available in lego that's the closest i could get and it is still working i can't believe it <laughs> i'm gonna drill and tap there is a little uh, there is a little vent hole at the top so if the grease expands and needs to come out it can do but this i can't I, the company quoted me to build one of these between uh, 150 and 200 pound that's what they quoted me and this has cost me 15 quid <laughs> it cost me uh, uh, it cost me about uh, six pound to buy the gears and the axles online uh, getting exactly what I wanted and then went, uh, there's a Lego store in, in Leeds Trinity and then I, I bought a little eight pound bucket of normal bricks to build around it 15 quid it's cost and it's, it's working. Yep, yep. <laughs> so everybody else used Lego. On the, this this tie wrap here is not tight. It's just to keep that cable going in there straight. Really, there should be proper screw fittings here, like there is up back at Speedo and on the gearbox. I don't think this is good. I don't think this is really going to last. I don't think so. Um, tell. <laughs> at the moment, it's working. Um, so, who knows? Who knows how long it'll last? I might put a Reliant part sticker on there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> plastic children's play bricks for a plastic pig. <laughs> <laughs> but there we have it. Um, so, we'll, we we should go out and have a little bit of a test ride, shouldn't we, Matt? We should, yeah. I mean, I've done quite a bit of testing, but I need to get as many miles on this as I can to build confidence back in it. But it is really lovely. The thing is, the, the what have I achieved by changing from 700 to 850? It's not any more powerful, but it's not any faster, really. I say it's not more powerful. I've noticed that when I'm going up hills, I don't have to change down as early as what I did before. It, it climbs hills better, I can just tell. It's not miles better, but it's a bit better. But where I really notice a difference is pulling around in low gear around these streets. It's just a lot more civilised, it's just so much more, it's so much smoother. But then again, a lot of that is probably down to that clutch buffoonery that somebody's done before. Yeah. That, you know, that's got obviously going to be contributing to um, rough running. But this is, uh, this is nice. It's running the best, the best it has done. So we're just going to get off more way here. And you've got your the viewers, we can't see at the moment, but when Fingers this video's done, we can see the speedo, can't yeah, we? Yeah. So we can crossed. compare the speedo with what's going on here as we go up this motorway, see how close it is. Because before, if I get up to about between 50 and 60 on here, it was showing over 70 and over 90 and 60. actually a 50 limit on here. So my speedo at the moment is showing about 45 there. And we'll see on the on the final video what it, what your GPS is really. Yeah. It's lovely and smooth. 50 mile an hour is about its best speed. It's more comfortable at that. It will do 60. We'll try and get it to 60 on here um, when we get past this limit. I don't know if we're getting up to 60. It just starts to get a little bit noisy. But at 40 mile an hour, what we're we doing here? 3000 RPM at 40. The thing is, the rear axle on a Regal is very low geared. This is for the, the rear axle of a saloon is 4.375, call it 4.4, 4.4 to 1. It's very low gear. And there was an option on the vans to go over 5, I think it was 
Imagine having one of them. <laughs> God, it'd be screaming, yeah. be screaming at 50, wouldn't it? Yeah. And the ratios in the 850 box, as I mentioned before, are slightly taller than the Regal. In the top gear is the same, wooden one. But the first three, slightly taller in a Robin. I think they only made one set of ratios for the 850 gearbox. They only made one set of ratios for the Regal. They just changed the back axle. To me, it doesn't sound as, as good as it did with that Weber, but I'm not going to change it. It's, it. it's diminishing returns. I'm not going to change it just yet, but the, the tinkering in me will end up having that changed <laughs> at some point.
Can you hear that fluttery noise? Can you hear that ticking? Yeah. On the clutch? That is the clutch release bearing, that titanium steel unit that I bought off eBay. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I mean, I don't, I don't like that sound being there. But, I don't think it's bad. If I just, if I just lift my foot off the clutch to the biting point, then um, it goes away. You hear it? Yeah. If I just lift off a bit, it goes away. I've tried to adjust it out of clutch, but I can't. Um, if I try to adjust it any further, I can't change the gear. Because that's where it's saddle shop is anyway. Decent oil pressure. 45 pounds. See, before that same gauge with a 700, we're only reading 30. Right. Say to you, shot, right? it says, it says, um, he went to Paris and he says uh, he passed his test at 65 because he had to change it because he had to change car. <laughs> and he drove to Paris in a tricycle. That's what he said. <laughs> well, to be honest with you, the way this is driving at the moment, I'd go anywhere in this. Well, you've got to plan things, haven't you? Yeah. And I wouldn't want to go a long stretch on any motorway. I'm supposed to be going to my, my mate Bear, who lives in Chatham in Kent, and I want to go in this. And I would go, I would go down the A1. The fair way is that? Yeah, yeah. I'd go down the A1, and is it the M14 near Cambridge? You know, right. I'd have to have a look, and then get on the M25. I'd have to do that, but I would probably do that at, at, at night. I'd probably set off about six, seven o'clock. I'd try and do it during the night, get down there. Yeah, do it later on when traffic's gone. I'd have a couple of beers and a pizza before going to bed yeah. when we get down there. I 
also plan to do the Lakes tour. Um, my mate Retro, who organises that, I have told him in the past that I want to do, I want to do the tricycle. It's meant to be for Ford Anglias, and I have done it all the time in my van. But I want to give this a, a reliability run. Yeah. And he organises it with his with his wife Chantal. And you know there are some steep climbs. There are some. He, he organises it really well. There's some really nice scenic um, runs that he does. And I know for a fact that if I go in this, I will get massive ribbing. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm prepared for that. Uh -huh. You know, you know I me mean? driving one of these. You got to put up with that, aren't you? Yeah. But I reckon it'll do it. Providing, you know, should be fine. Provided I keep up to this, look out after this. It's at the end of this month. Right. So what do you reckon, Bath? All right, this. Yeah, I think it's brilliant. It's running absolutely like a sewing machine, isn't it? At the moment, it is running really nice. It really is. And like I say, when you're in traffic like this, that that you know, remember that harsh clutch? Yeah, it'll a very, really harsh clutch. A very jolty. It's not doing that anymore. Part of that, obviously, is the wrong the wrong assembly before by a previous order. Part of it is because I changed from a Borgenbeck cover to an LUK cover, so it's just more progressive. Yeah. It's just smoother, the whole thing. journey I did this in this still had 700 engine in it and I went to Stratford race course for that Ford Cortina and Anglia me oh yeah and it, this car were really well received there's quite a few people that know me there they know that I've, I've been to Ford as well and they, they loved it they really did like it and there's a neighbour near me and when I told him that I'd been to Stratford race course he's not really into cars but he, he really does look down his nose at this. Is it? Yeah, you can tell with comments. And he and he's and, and I, I told him I've been to Stratford Race Car. So he, what? In that? <laughs> you know, as if as if I were as if I were cycling or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah. But that clutch problem reared its head. Yeah. Um, 
I didn't really want to do that, but because it was start of season, I thought, I can't leave that. I'm not leaving that through season. I've got to try and find out what that is. Luckily, we're an easy fix. And now, overall, it's better than ever. So, we'll, uh, we'll be that viewers goodbye at that, yeah? Yep. And uh, see you again later. Ta -da. Bye. Right, uh, right. I'm gonna. That's gonna go home now, and I'm gonna take this car up to the garage. The car is not. The garage is not local. The tricycle lives in a garage about three mile, three mile away. So um, when I go up to the garage, I have to cycle up there, and uh, when I put this away, I have to cycle home. But this is where the tricycle does its Thunderbird 2 impression. <laughs> Do you remember where Thunderbirds, when Thunderbird 2 used to give birth? It used to give birth that little yellow Thunderbird 4. Yeah. So this is this this is my other mode of transport. Fits in perfectly in there, doesn't it? It does. Look at that. And it's no ordinary boat to ride. This is I've converted this to electric. So that fits in perfectly in there. I, when I go camping or anything, I can take this with me. And there we have it. I mean, these Brompton bikes, they're not cheap. But what's the official, the official Brompton Electric? Isn't it about three grand or something? It's ridiculous. It's somewhat stupid. I mean, it does look lovely with the colours that you can get. It looks nice. But, Oh, I've got to unlock this first. I don't do this very often. I decided to buy, plus the colour match. Look at that, the <laughs> colour match. Put that on. <laughs> I decided to buy the cheapest Brompton that were available, which is the Brompton B75 model. And then I stuck my own kit on it. I think to buy, I think to buy the B75 now. I don't think it's a special edition bike. It was built to, it's named to celebrate Brompton because it started in 1975. That's what the B, that's what the 75's are. And, um, to buy this, I think it's 800 quid. It's the cheapest one you can buy because it's the cheapest spec. Right, when I got hold of this, I had to put mud guards on it. Because you can't you can't commute or go anywhere on a regular basis without having mud guards, I don't think. I put mud guards on it. I changed this. Um, I changed the gearing slightly. But then that didn't really matter once I'd gone electric. And then the electric kit is all down the front. The motor's built into the front wheel there. And then this is a 17 amp hour battery that's just clamped on here. These clamps I got from Screwfix. I got them clamps from Screwfix and then just drilled through this carrier. One thing I do have to do, I always have to remember to lock this battery on here. Because if I don't lock this battery, I fear, as soon as I go over any bumps, that drops off. Right. I've done it that many times, right? you can see how I put tape around here yeah. and you're not really supposed to knock these um, lithium batteries around but that has come off there a few times, that's my fault um, I've done a few little mods on here, like there's a little loop here that pulls that bag that bag thing off there and then there's another one here, I just pull that to release that Generally speaking, that's my that's my little commuting bike. I go all over, you know. If I'm not driving, I'll be on this. I probably do look a bit of a clown on this, to be honest, because I'm so tall. But I am bothered. Look at this in there. I've got that mountain bike there. That's electric as well. And this has made that get stored away. <laughs> that that is more comfy to ride over bumpy terrain, obviously. But when I put the battery on that now, that feels really sluggish. <laughs> yeah, this is really nippy. Because it's got smaller wheels, it's it's really nippy. It's not the whole point of electric bikes is not about speed. It's about saving your effort going up hills. Yeah. But this, just 
it's just so nice to ride. You've got to have good surface, really, with small wheels. And I don't know how these people at scooters go about. No, oh, them you know, All they have to do is it a little all, and that's yeah. it, isn't it? Yeah, you were straight off it. Um, but yeah, that's my little commuting bike. And that's what I go up to garages on. The colour match is great, isn't it? It is. You couldn't have, couldn't I mean, have matched honest, it any better. To be honest, when I bought this bike, I wanted that colour. And you can only get that colour in the B75. That This is the only colour the B75 comes in. But you can't get that colour in any of the other range. Yeah. You can't get it. Um, like I say, the, the proper Brompton Electric does look a lot more um, elegant, I would say. Because you haven't got this. You've just got a battery on the front here. Um, well, it's down here actually, isn't it? Is it down here? Can't Can't sure. Cost three grand in it for an official Brompton electric. This, um, you'd buy that bike new for 800 quid, and then you can buy this kit for about five, 500. And that includes, that. you don't get this battery, but you get a different battery. Uh, 500 quid, what's that? 1300 quid yeah yeah between 13 and 1400 quid less than half price of the official brompton what would you do exactly exactly <laughs> plus i've even put fold up pedals on this and it's got fold up pedals on both sides whereas brompton usually only stick a fold up fold up pedal on one side i have got a proper bag that goes on here it's upstairs so i can do my shopping on it and what have you and when it when it, when this goes in house, I don't do a full fold. When this goes in house, I just do this. I just do that, and so it sits in all the way like that, and it just takes up so much less space. And it's so effortless to fold. It's it so as well. effortless. It just stands like that. It won't stand out here in the, on its uneven, but in all the way, it just stands like that. And then when you come out, that's it. And like I say, furthest I've been on this, I went when I went to Moss. You know, in that video, when I picked that choke cable up. Oh, yeah. I went all the way along Lee's Liverpool Canal to go to the shop on, the, on this for yeah. a ride out. I didn't drive there. Yeah. Um, the full range on this battery is about just over 30. It depends what setting I have this on. I, I usually have it on three or four foot power setting. At the moment, it's still showing full. And there's my assist. It always comes on at one. Now, like, that's three. That's four. That's full. I never have it on full, so I think it's overkill. Um, you're just wasting your battery really but I use every on three or four one you don't feel anything really two you can but you can start to feel it three when you're not flat if you're not flat and you just cruise you just moseying along at a steady rate three is ideal yeah but then if you start encountering any hills I just put it on four yeah and it just takes all effort out of going uphill and it's not about speed like I say loads of people go past me when I'm riding on this even though this is electric but then when we get to hills if they're not on an electric bike, I'm passing them. Yeah, yeah. Usually. Unless it's some Wiggins wannabe <laughs> like a clad, you know what I mean? Yeah. Refusing to use the cycle lanes, etc. etc. <laughs> so yeah, just thought we'd show that as well. Seeing as we're doing going on a video extravaganza today. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> <laughs> Alright then, see you later.